Hey guys, Adrian here, and welcome to the Dojo Cast. This is episode 22 of the Dojo Cast, MS Skype. Hey guys, Adrian here, and I know, um, again, I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, uh, and according to shows and everything like that, or show schedules and everything like that. I have been a little bit off, I've been a little bit slacking on the blogs as well, and getting out the content on time, and, you know, posting on the blog. Uh, more than that, you know, I've been busy, uh, I've been a little lazy, not gonna lie, you know, I've been, uh, you know, I had piled the schoolwork and then all the stuff, you get home and then I kind of just, uh, you know, I do the pod, even like last week I recorded the podcast and then I got everything done, edited it, and then I think just time, time constraints where I upload it to YouTube and stuff like that, but I never got posted to the blog in time and stuff like that, and I feel, uh, like I really need to get on schedules because I know a lot of people read, some people, you know, like to get the content from the blog, some of it, or some of them like to get the content from iTunes, and some of it like to get the content from YouTube. And, you know, I'm trying to find a medium where we can get all that, like, uh, a way for me to easily, you know, put it on one and, uh, like, let's say I put it on YouTube and from YouTube and go to iTunes or from, you know, uh, I guess that's what a service like blip.tv is for, so we're trying to get a lot of, uh, you know, a way to easily upload you know, one wave, uh, one content, and have it go through multiple networks. Uh, you know, we're still routing that through. Um, along with that, I've been feeling a little bit under the weather lately. You know, I've been sick, and I'm not today. I don't feel too good. I have a migraine, but uh, I'm gonna try and get the episode done here. And um, relatively, uh, it won't be a uh, super long episode to be honest. But um, because I, I do, there's some big news though in this week. But um, again, uh, it's late at night here, and I just want to get the show done because uh, I've. Not to, you know, again, not feeling too well, but I do want to get the show done nonetheless. Anyways, um, first story of the day is from Mashable. Mashable has the six best practices for a media company on Facebook. And I thought this would just be a really, really um, great article to, what do you call that? Uh, or, yeah, a great article to spotlight because they, it's, you know, if you have a company and your Facebook, you know, or social networks in general are a great way for your company's name to be, you know, spread to share social links to, you know, get a following on, uh, these social, uh, websites that, you know, majority of the audience use, for example, Twitter, Facebook, uh, stuff like that. That way you can put your name out there and, you know, people can like you on these services and, you know, they can follow you through other means and rather than just going to your blog, you know, they can see you on Facebook. They can, you know, it, it takes out that extra step for them. You know, maybe they might even read the full article. You know, they see it in their status and they want to read the full article, then they can go over to your site. You know, uh, there's so many advantages to using a, you know, having your media company on Facebook. Now, the first top six tips here they have for, or best practices, I should say, um, for number one, choose the right content here. And um, so publishers have found that certain kinds of content perform better than others on Facebook, particularly content that inspires emotional connections with the readers. So you want to, again, pick and choose what you want to, uh, what do you call that? Pick and choose what you want to put on your Facebook, you know, especially like if you're going to be posting this as a status, as like, you know, an article, you're being sharing a link to an article or anything like that. And the title, you know, you kind of just, uh, you know, watch your content you're posting, and they have some really interesting, uh, what do you call that, uh, what do you call it? sorry, I'm just reading these, <laughs> I'm reading these, um, they have these pictures here over at Mashable, of some statuses that are kind of questionable, um, and you can read these through, uh, over again, I'm going to post a link in the, uh, video description below, if you're watching this on video, or if you're watching this on, or listening to this on iTunes, the audio version will be in the show notes as well, or on the blog at digitaldojos.com. Okay, number two, add a thought caption. So you always want to get, you know, um, story links with a question or a statement attached, for example, you know, like opinion. Um, this is something I, I learned in video, too. You always want to kind of get your audience involved. You know, you can, it's great to just post out a story there, you know. Um, for example, you know, like this, this this article, we're doing six best practices for your media companies. Um, and, you know, you may outreach that and add, you know, an extra caption to that. And, you know, what's what are your, you know, any, any other thoughts, any other best practices that you can add to this list, comment below, you know, stuff like that gets the uh, users interacted in the uh, content will not only make them feel more personally attached, but, you know, it gives, you you get feedback from them on what you should add maybe next time in a, in a related post or anything like that. Number three, time your post. Again, this is something uh, I've tried to pick up with podcasting. It's all about schedule, you know, of course you can always News news content is a little bit more different. You know, you're posting as news comes out if you want to stay on top of news. Um, but there's also, you know, stories and terms where you can, even if it's news articles, you can time when you want to post these events. You know, if it's a review of a product or anything like that. Kind of just decide when would be the peak time um, in posting your status. And now, I, translating this to Facebook, obviously you want to see when, when your followers are most active and stuff like that. So, you know, you want to time when you post out your 
uh, posts and statuses like that, um, you know, between statuses, stuff like that. Listen and engage, and again, that goes back to number two, I believe. So just listen to your audience, engage in them, uh, reply to some of their comments. You don't have to necessarily go through each one and reply because I know that takes time, and I'm sure they understand. But, you know, general consensus, if you see a question that's asked there a lot in the status, just go ahead and reply to that. Use the feedback feedback to inform storytelling. So on Facebook, they have this new feedback, basically a, like a poll. Um, you know, you can add ask a question, and, um, you know, you can... Um, uh, go through the poll that they vote through, and you can get feedback from there as well to help you improve for your next, you know, post or sh social media strategy next time. Number six, journalists should use it too. So Facebook isn't a utility it says here that doesn't begin and end it in digital strategy department. Facebook is also providing useful for journalists and keeping it such as uh, and and is keen to be seen as such. So again, you know, uh, recognize that Facebook isn't a thing only for your company, but you know. Uh, individual journalists and stuff like that can use it now. Obviously, I use it, but again, I guess I run with multiple people on my blog. But it is something that you can take advantage of, regardless if you're, you know, one man team, two man team, or you know, full on social media company. So that is the article over at Mashable. You can get more in depth uh, along with pictures of some example statuses and stuff like that over at the uh, Mashable.com. And again, I'm gonna put links in the show notes. Alrighty, um, YouTube. The uh, YouTube uh, has just added 3,000 new movies to its rental service. So this is something I talked about way back when, when the YouTube was just launching that they were going to be starting a rental service to get, you know, allow you to rent free movies or rent movies via their website. You know, kind of get more of a online TV experience. You know, there's so much content on YouTube now. And recently, like, you know, they've been adding free movies. They've been making some deals. They've added short films. They've added all the stuff. And rental is just another way they're kind of you know, putting up there to com uh, compete with some of their companies, you know, obviously Netflix and Hulu are big, uh, you know, and Google even are big, or not Google, because Google is, sorry, Google is YouTube, but um, uh, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Apple, you know, they all have that market, but right now it just puts YouTube in direct competition, and, you know, the thing about uh, Hulu and all that, you don't have that user content, which is YouTube is really famous for, but anyways, 3,000 new movies um, by the likes of Sony, Warner, Warner Brothers, Universal, and Lionsgate have been added to the new roster of films that will go live on Monday, um, and the movies will be include behind the scenes, movie reviews, uh, typically found, you know, in your extra, your DVD extras and Blu-ray releases. Um, and the quote here says, you're finding more and more content you love on YouTube, which is now available to 350 million devices, said the YouTube ha head, uh, Salar Com Command guard, command guard. Um, so yeah, really great news if you're a YouTube rental service. I think here it's not limit. It's limited in my country, I believe. Here in Japan, since I'm overseas. But um, if you are in the states, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure if it's country restricted, but um, I think most of the stuff here is country restricted, so that sucks. But um, uh, you know, there's always proxies, I guess, and stuff like that you can use. But um, if you are, a, you know, a uh, fan of rental services and renting a movie, and you know, they have some stuff like Super Size. Is it Super Size? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a movie. They, you know, they have all these documentaries and great. Uh, movies that they've been adding to the rosters. I'm sure down the road they'll be making deals for more and more uh, companies to get new movies and stuff like that added to their roster. All right, moving to a big story of the week. Uh, it was actually shocking. It was only a couple hours ago the deal was confirmed. There was speculation of Microsoft um, and a deal going on with Microsoft uh, acquiring Skype. Yes, Skype. Uh, MS Skype, I guess, is what uh, people were, uh, you know, there's some... Uh, chatter earlier about, you know, Skype Nan and what, what possible names could be uh, called or be called once this was this deal went official. And obviously, again, MS Skype isn't the official name, but, um, you know, we're, it, it takes you back to the MSN Messenger days. I used to use MSN. Uh, I remember I used to have it always open. I used to boot up with my computer. And I used to love, you know, having... Uh, you know, it was back then when I was uh, more younger, I guess, and that was when I was like 11, 10. I used to love having the IM Instant Messenger open, always be able to, you know, instant feedback with my friends, you know. Even if it's just like you just got back hanging out with them, then you go online and you can chat with them. And, you know, it's, it's great. And um, it's more that I, as I grew older, I kind of uh, less and less got into the IM just because it was more of a distraction than it became of a thing, you know, that I really enjoyed. Just because it was kind of like that thing where, like, if you were online, they could... They could constantly, you know, like they would even if you put your status to away or anything like that I guess you can put invisible and stuff like that, that would, that, which is good. But I mean, like, you know, you'd always have those people who would message you at the wrong times or just like constantly message you, even like you know if they don't get a reply the first two times. And then MSN had that nudge thing, and you know, regardless, MSN was a very popular product by, uh, you know, today's standards. But uh, I, 
in my friend circle, I don't know, and I see this a lot too, I can't speak for the mass public, I guess, but I've seen more people obviously transition to Skype because Skype is much better in terms of VoIP technology, voice over IP. I've, I've gotten more accustomed, you know, instead of IMing, I can just call somebody and, you know, say what I need to say to them quicker than I can, you know, chat with them. Um, and, you know, and then again, that's said for some people, some people would rather IM than, you know, uh, talk. And there's also video calling, which is great with Skype. But Skype has been a really popular product, um, but, you know, hasn't really seen much updates. And with the updates it has seen, it's been kind of going downhill. Um, so ever since I would think Skype version 5 for Windows, um, you know, they started offering paid services for Skype. They had stuff where you, they've always had paid cheap plans to call states and stuff like that, or, you know, other countries. But they've offered, like, there used to be a group calling feature, which was uh, a beta, which is really great. You know, you can talk with four people, five people, um, all using their webcam. And I think that was really one of the at that time when the beta was out for Skype, Skype Beta 5, that was like the peak time me and my friends really used it because, you know, weekends would be great just to, you know, you meet up because um, me being a military child, a lot of my friends kind of move, you know, overseas. A lot of them are here for like a long time and then some of them, you know, get scattered, you know, the Germany, states, stuff like that. They go where they need to go. Um, but Skype was a great way to keep in touch and stuff like that, and especially with the video calling. Um, but then, you know, I think came the official version, Skype uh, made it a paid service, so you can only do one-on-one -on -one video calling, which is, you know, it's great quality and all, but it's, I would hope that I would at least like three-way video calling for free, you know, if they have to charge beyond that, I would guess I would understand. But, um, again, you know, they, they made some other pe features pra paid, uh, the interface got some changes, which were, you know, I got used to, but, you know, overall, Skype wasn't, there was a lot of stuff that was kind of going downhill for it. Um, one of the things also, Mac support wasn't a huge, huge uh, priority. Or, you know, it wasn't really seeing, I think Skype's only like version 3 or 2 for Mac. And I re the Mac interface just really, I don't know, in my opinion, it really sucks. So, um, But uh, it's really different from the Windows interface, that's for sure. You know, even though they're on different OSs, you know, the Linux version's more uh, user-friendly, I think, to me than the Mac version. But anyways, um... There's a lot of hopes and fears of this deal. So first off, there's a lot of speculation that, you know, or not speculation statements, that Skype or Microsoft overpaid for Skype. They paid an $8.5 billion, that's a B dollar deal, for Skype. So, you know, obviously Microsoft has the money, and they want to, uh, you know, this will make Microsoft, uh, in terms of, you know, the, the why it would make sense for them to purchase. They can be a direct competitor for they they integrate this obviously they'll integrate this in the Xbox technology and the game console and the Kinect and all that stuff. Um so you can use Skype uh with um you know that, that type of Xbox live interface and they can always tie this into stuff like Outlook, uh their mail program to kind of VoIP, you know, your contacts. You can have this like I said with live, you can Skype your contacts. And that's one of the reasons the first reason Skype was purchased by eBay. eBay had that thing where like, you know, you can buy the seller or you can buy the seller, you can contact the seller via Skype. And they want to integrate this into a website. Well, Microsoft what they'll be doing is integrating to their services for sure. But um uh another thing is obviously like I said, they they may have a renaming of the the desktop platform, but some of the fears that, that were raised were that um you know, one, that Mac support won't be obviously, uh, you know, not to say it's not going to be high priority, but then again, you know, Microsoft is a competitor of Apple, but I'm sure they won't neglect, they're not totally going to neglect the Mac platform, that's just, you know, they're a company, they're a business, and, you know, they're they're fair on both sides, or not fair, more, <laughs> but um, they're not just going to completely neglect the Mac version, but um, uh, along with that, there's fears of it becoming more of a, you know, Microsoft branded product, you know, kind of like when the big company takes over that we won't see really what the users wanted. So we're hoping that, you know, they listen to the users, they deliver what's needed, and they put Skype back on track. And again, the paid services, we're not sure how those are going to work out yet. So whatever the subscription models are and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, um, this could be a direct competitor with FaceTime as well. Uh, this can be put on the Windows 7 phones, and, you know, this will be a thing where they can video conference via their phone. So, big news, um, and, you know, just all around. I guess it's a, it's a great purchase in terms of Microsoft, but, again, eh, I'm still weighing the pros and cons on how it's going to turn out here, so we're going to have to see how it goes in the coming time. Alrighty, uh, some more news in the gaming industry. I wrote a post about this, the breach of uh, Sony. This was a big news for the last couple weeks, or, you know, I think it's the last two weeks. Um, I wrote a, uh, what do you call it, a all up-to-date uh, breach article over at digitaldojos.com. You guys can check that out, talking about the three attacks. And today I want to talk about the third attack, which is planned against Sony. Uh, this is an article written on May, on May 5th. A group of hackers saying it's playing another wave of cyber attacks against Sony in retaliation for handling 
the way it's handled the PlayStation Network breach, which, you know, it's been a, uh, a hellhole for Sony lately. You know, it's been a long time for them to get up the PSN servers up ever since they were hacked. You know, they're running old versions of Pochi, they said, uh, which led to the attack or the hack and obviously credit card data they just found out was released and stuff like that. Uh, or, you know, ex personal information in general was released. Uh, a huge amount of customers were infected. I think it was in the, it was in the millions, hundreds of millions uh, Sony customers that were jeopardized. Uh, it took a while for them to make a statement on you know what they were doing, how it was going, and later on they announced something called the Welcome Back program, which will give you like a month free of PlayStation Network Plus and for an extension if you're already a PlayStation Plus member. Um, stuff like that. That's basically the whole gist of it. But ba basically, in response to this, a third yeah a third group is saying that they're going to be uh, you know hacking or claim to hack Sony a threat for a third attack um, for the way that Sony's handled this. So, you know, Sony's gonna, getting hit from all corners right now, which really uh, are, you know, everywhere in every direction, which kind of, you know, it sucks because, again, this I guess this could happen to anybody. Obviously, it's nothing to, you know, let them slip off with because they're a huge company. Um, they should have taken the security measures much more, uh, what do you call that? Because, you know, to kind of come out there and say the person, your personal data was encrypted, our version of Apache was old, stuff like that. You know, it's not it's not going to go great with the customers, and even if they do do this welcome back program, there's going to be a lot of, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see a dip in customers and uh, a lot of unsatisfaction with people who use PlayStation. I'm sure a lot of them, I know some people even switch over to the Xbox. I'm sure that's not a huge number. Uh, you know, I'm sure for the people who own both, so some are just more prominent predominantly on the Xbox as of right now. But uh, as they said, they said servers are going to be going up and up, so uh, you will be able to get access to your PlayStation Network and be able to play online again. So this is, a uh, again, a interesting article over at CNET. This is Circuit Breaker, uh, written over at the Circuit Breaker blog on CNET News. All right, and some Apple news. I also did a cover of this over at YouTube.com slash Digital Dojos, the newest iMac uh, has been released, um, and this is the this is a, a huge by like you know there's no design updates and it's going to be the same uh, seamless design that's been popular, elegant, um, all on one screen. Obviously the de the desktop and tower all in one. Um, the iMac has gone now completely cordless. They provide you with the, obviously the wired wireless and wireless Apple Magic Mouse and a wireless Apple keyboard, I should say, and. Sorry, there goes my phone. And I'm going to mute that real quick, sorry. Anyways, um, as I was saying here, and my mute switch doesn't want to go. Okay, anyways, um, the iMac has came out with a, I believe, the new, uh, so there's a new, there's a quad-core processor that's been in there. They, they have the i5s and i7s, if I'm not mistaken. The graphics um, processor, like I know the graphics, um, they're using the ATI cards. They've been... Uh, they claim to be three times as fast, I believe. So you're gonna get smoother graphics, uh, and you know, obviously nicer gaming and stuff like that. The LED backlit display, you're still getting your 20, I believe your 24 and 20, 20 inch models, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, don't quote me on that. I think I'm pretty sure it's 24 and 20 inch, or is it 20? They have a 27 inch, I believe now too. So 27 inch and uh, 24 inch, maybe. Um, but one of the biggest things they added, obviously, they brand the FaceTime camera, which is the HD camera they always put on the top now. They brand it no longer eyesight but facetime because it's meant to be used with facetime um the thunderbolt port which has been added this will allow you for faster connections for external hard drives though can be also used for like a display port if you get the adapter so you can run like a triple monitor setup with the imax now you see that's a really popular thing with the new imax um you know it's an all-in-one design like i said um the price point is around the same if i'm not mistaken i can go over to apple.com now and let me go see the baseline price because I don't have the article I wrote pulled up here. Um, but anyways, um, like I said, you know these are the popular all-in-one design. They have the quad-core i5 and i7. I um, the Radeon Radeon or the ATI or sorry, is it ATI or the AMD graphics? I should say the AMD graphics three times faster. Um, and the Thunderbolt, the FaceTime camera is really is all you saw. So like more hardware upgrades, nothing. And a port being added, which uh, you know a lot of people are looking forward to uh, the uh, whole Thunderbolt generation, you know, devices to come out. But um, it starts at one thousand two hundred dollars and goes up from there, depending on how you want to spec it out. So it's it's much faster um, with the processor and graphic speed, nicer screen, or the screen's about the same size, but the LED, 
you know, you, you get that instant on and that nice, uh, the, the IMAX screens have always been nice, but with the LED, again, LED is just much better in terms of backlit and, uh, saving, not battery, I guess battery wouldn't matter with the iMac, but, um, in terms of, like, you know, power usage and all of that. Anyway, so that's uh, some news there. And today, the last article before we end the podcast, guys. LimeWire, the founder of the popular P2P or peer-to-peer uh, network on the copyright law, states, I was wrong, he says. So uh, New York lawyers representing the four largest music labels tried to convey a message in court today. LimeWire founder Mark Gordon was so determined to help people pirate songs that he Dis- disregarded the copyright law, artist rights, and even the Supreme Court, they said, and eventually Gordon concealed. Uh, the best that he could offer for an excuse was he misread the law. He said, I was wrong. Uh, you know, flat out, I was wrong. Gordon told the court, I didn't think our behavior was inducing copyright infringement. I understand that a court has found otherwise. And, you know, this has been a case that's been going on uh, for a couple months now, I believe. And, you know, obviously, LimeWire has been. I think you can still, I'm not sure if you can still get it. I believe that most of the, the service has been shut down, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, and you can read his full quote, what he says here, and, you know, more article or details about the, uh, um, this was brought up back in 2006. So it's been a, it's been a case in the years and going on, but obviously it was shut down recently this year. Um, it was determined, but Gordon would pay, uh, pay, but a jury is now tasked with deciding the amount, which can be anywhere from $7 million to $1.4 billion. Uh, not only damages uh, damages award mean a big payday for the labels, obviously, and they're going to be. It's not even. I guess it's all about the money for the labels, but not only that, it's going to be more that it's a message that these labels want to send out to all these, you know, piraters and all the uh, piracy people and all like that. That you know, we can catch you, or you know, we're going to take down these big peer peer networks, and you know, we're out there to get you type thing. But again, like people say, you know, you uh, there's a lot of opinions varying on piracy, but even if you take out you know, one figurehead, you take out Pirate Bay, you take out LimeWire, there's still, you know, FrostWire, uTorrent, all these other peer-to-peer networks, and, you know, not, not essentially you don't tie peer-to-peer with uh, legal, because peer-to-peer itself is a protocol that is, you know, completely legal, and um, these ne- these actual applications can be used for good, and a lot of people do use them for good. For example, I download programs like shareware, freeware, stuff like that, um, a lot of, uh, what do you call that? Because peer to peer, they hold essentially you're getting parts of files from different people. It can increase your download speed. It's obvious, uh, instead of you know taking one big chunk from one place, you get parts of it from different people. Um, and I know mainly the software I use stuff like uh, you know there's I know jailbreaking tools like Red Snow I believe and uh, stuff like the Snow Breeze and stuff like that. They they go through like a uh, they they put the torrent out there and then you can download it and you can get it through uTorrent or something like that. Um, podcasts, I know Revision 3 and stuff like that, um, even Kevin Rose has stated in uh, Dignation and stuff like that, you, podcasts can be downloaded, um, movie, or not not movies, but you know, these long podcasts are 40 minutes, 50 minutes can be downloaded via torrents, which are, you know, some people find faster than downloading it directly from the sites. And you know, stuff like that, um, even sharing files, I've done that before, you know, you can personally share files between you and a friend or you and a family using peer-to-peer networks if you want do that same movies videos tv shows uh, stuff like that um but you know i I mean like not tv shows sorry i'm getting confused here but um that would be illegal obviously but um or not technically yeah technically it would be legal but um you know sharing like home videos and stuff like that's what i meant to say or uh, pictures or any any of that jazz i guess but um uh, there is a lot of illegal you know illegal stuff you can do with it no doubt and there's a lot of illegal stuff that went on the majority of that went on and you know there's been a whole bunch of court cases surrounding this now people are accusing cnet of you know download.com how they used to push that as their top download they're accusing uh cnet to being a uh, i guess a coke and you know a uh i guess they assisted in the uh piracy which is you know completely that's a whole nother story on its own anyways guys that is the news for the day i do want to end with a quick pick and that is on my iphone here so let me open up here actually was it I have forgot. Oh no, sorry, sorry. No, that was last. That was uh, I had a two picks earlier, and I decided between a hardware pick, or a hardware pick, and a software pick. And I went with a hardware pick. I have a review coming out for this very soon. I've been using it, and I still have to give uh, some final touches and some experiments on it. This is the um, Seagate GoFlex, and my focus isn't on right now. Sorry. Uh, this is a Seagate GoFlex. This is a. Um, if you ever use a WD Live or anything like that, basically it is a, um, I don't know what type of, I guess a media tuner, I guess is that the devices you call it. Um, basically you take these, uh, you plug a hard drive into it, an external hard drive, or 
uh, I heart or like a Seagate the flex drives you can you know put in here I think hey, this one's for the the SATA drives you can put any SATA drive in here and close it up or you can attach a Western Digital drive a Seagate drive via USB an external you know hard drive with movies on it that you own or um, you know you can get um, what else you can, music I think music plays music and stuff like that or if you use Netflix and stuff like that it has all built into these are your set top boxes I believe that's what you call them there you go. Um, and you plug it in, and you plug in an HDMI uh, to your HD TV, or you have an option of AV out or uh, your optical for your audio and stuff like that for your video. This is for your, you know, your, you have your. Uh, I think these are the yellow, red, white. If you have those, um, it also comes with a LAN cable, so you can plug this into your TV, and you can stream music from your hard drive to your HD TV. So you know you can watch movies that you've rented off iTunes and stuff like that, or bought off iTunes. Instead of watching on your computer, pull them over to your HD TV, plug it into this uh, media player, and it'll play on your HD TV. You know you can watch on your big 40, uh, 36 inch, like I do. Or that's not huge, but um, my 36 inch sitting behind me. That's what I do with this little box right here. Um, and like I said, it has Netflix, has web browsing uh, built into it, has some other cool features built into it as well. And it's a nice browser to uh, kind of browse around your media files. Um, and it has a LAN connection. Like I said, you can connect it to either, um, connect it to your network so you can watch YouTube videos. Like I said, you can use the Netflix instant queue and stuff like that. The YouTube videos work out really well too, so you can watch um, uh, you know whatever your subscription stuff like that. But there is some flaws in there, which I'm going to talk about in my review. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Go over to youtubecom dojos. I picked this up for I believe eighty dollars. They run eighty dollars anywhere to one hundred thirty dollars plus around there, depending on the brand you get and the features built into the box. But hey, this one does me fine. Again, a review coming up very soon over at youtubecom dojos. This is the Seagate GoFlex. Uh, TV again, go flex TV. Anyways, guys, this concludes episode 22 of the digital or the Dojo Cast. Hope you guys enjoyed, it, and I will catch you guys next week. Thanks for watching.